All right, welcome back to our second of two videos on the introduction to classification. So where we left off last time, we talked a little bit about the history of classification, talked about Aristotle's contributions with coming up with the first hierarchy of classification. And then we talked about this fine gentleman here, Carolus Linnaeus, who is the father of modern classification. Classification, again, is the organization of living things into groups based on their evolutionary relationships. That's the modern definition, where today we base it on evolutionary relationships. We use genetic info. The Linnaean system was based purely on structure, so what things looked like. And again, taxonomy is the science of classifying things. So why is this so important? Why is the Linnaean system so revolutionary that we need to talk about it? So before Linnaeus' system, people were pretty much naming organisms whatever they wanted. And it was the same across cultures. So we might have a person who sees a dog in one culture and gives it a name. And then in another culture, they see a dog and give it a different name. And you end up with basically a lot of names that mean nothing to people in other cultures, which made communication between scientists almost impossible because no one had any idea what anybody was talking about. So the first thing that Linnaeus's system of binomial nomenclature, the assigning of scientific names based on two names naming system, is that it made people across cultures and languages able to communicate with each other. So scientific names are based in Greek and Latin roots, which makes them a little difficult to say sometimes, but at least it's sort of continuous across cultures. So the skunk, whereas in the previous slide we had people calling it whatever they felt like calling it, the scientific name, the genus Mephitis, and the species Mephitis. And again, you see italicized uppercase genus, lowercase species. So you can call up a scientist in France and you can say Mephitis, Mephitis, and they'll know you're talking about a skunk. Same thing with China, same thing with anywhere in Brazil. This is sort of the nice characteristic of scientific naming in the binomial nomenclature system. The second thing is that it prevents people from assigning misleading names to animals. So I've got quite a few examples here of animals that are sort of misnamed. The first one is starfish, and the second one is jellyfish. Now, both of these starfish, jellyfish, they're not fish. They're part of a class of a family of animals known as cnidarians, and we'll talk about what cnidarians are. And then the other ones down here, dogfish, catfish, seahorse. There's actually, there was an interesting period in history where people thought that there was an allegory for every land animal in the ocean. So when they would find animals, they would name them after animals that they found on land. So that's where we get dogfish, catfish, and seahorse, even though this is not related to a dog at all, not related to a cat at all, and not related to a horse at all. So again, our Scientific naming, naming system is related to evolutionary relationships, DNA, so it doesn't let people make these false associations that don't actually exist. So here's the Linnaean hierarchy. And what he did was establish groups, and these groups are each called taxa. So when I talk about the taxa, this is what I'm talking about. So the first one is domain. This is the most broad category, meaning that being in the same domain as another organism tells you very, very little about what you have in common with them, very little. So there's three domains. Then next we have kingdoms. There are six kingdoms. We will study those as well. And then going down, getting more specific, we have phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Species, if you are the same species as someone, that means that you can reproduce and your offspring will also be able to have babies of their own. That's what it means to be a species. That's sort of the, the technical definition. Now, if you notice our scientific names, our binomial nomenclature, they come from all the way down here, our genus and our species. That's where we get our scientific names from. So in order to memorize these, because you do have to memorize the taxa, you gotta know the taxa. So here's my trick, come up with your own, feel free to. Mine is dumb kings play chess on fine gold stools. So this is a mnemonic device where each letter represents one of the different ones. So D, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So a little quiz for you, comprehension check. Use this diagram over here. So if you notice at the top here, it has the name of the organisms and then it uses the same picture on the way down. And notice it has kingdom, phylum, it has it listed there. So who is more closely related to the black bear, a coral snake or a fox? Good, hopefully you guys were able to get that it is the fox because if you notice here, 
Here we have our black bear and they are in the same order together. So we go from general to specific. So since they're in the same order together, they are much more closely related than a black bear and a coral snake, which are just in the same phylum together. Next question, what is the most specific taxa shared by panda bears and grizzly bears? Good, hopefully you were able to get that it is the family. Because if you look down here, we have pandas and grizzlies in the same family together. All right, last question. Panthera tigris. So right here, your tiger. Does tigris refer to the tiger's genus or species? Good. Hopefully you were able to get that tigris, your second term here. This tells you the species. That's the most specific you can get, most specific. And then Panthera, capital P, tells you the genus. You got to italicize the whole thing. So that is the end of our presentation, part one and two on classification. Please feel free to rewatch this as many times as you would like to review what is classification, the history of classification, and some of the Linnaean hierarchical systems that we have.